So your major influences growing up? Uh, Ingrid Malmsteen was a was an early one. Yeah. I mean, I I started listening to like heavy metal music around the time when I started playing the guitar. You know, like mm. nine or ten years old. Right. And my older brother had a lot of albums. He had all the like Iron Maiden, Dio, Accept. Yeah. Black Sabbath, like all the, all the stuff in the early to mid eighties. What Malmsteen uh, record was current when you started playing? Maybe marching out. Marching out, so like a second yeah. record. What well, was as but a solo? Rising artist. Force was the first one I heard. Yeah, yeah. I remember the first time I heard Malmsteen. It was the, it was that unaccompanied solo on Steeler, the Steeler mm -hmm. record before um, Hot on Your Heels. That was the first thing I heard by Ingve, and we had a here in Houston. There was a, a show on Friday nights on the radio called Metal Shop, and they played. I remember hearing it. It was just like holy cow because. You know, before I heard Ingve, nobody in rock guitar played like that at all. You know, it was it was yeah. it was an incredible jump. Uh, Pe people didn't believe it. Yeah, I, I remember playing uh, the, the listening to the album Rising Force mm -hmm. at home, and my, and my dad had one of his friends there, and and that guy played some guitar, mm -hmm. and I said, "You got to listen to this guy," and he was like. Pfft. It's clearly sped up, <laughs> and I was like, "No, it's it's really, yeah. really, really can't play like that." Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's crazy, man! And that's that's yeah. got to have been before YouTube and all that stuff, right? Yeah, way, way, way yeah. before. Yeah, for sure, because you know, I, that was before I even knew that you could speed things up. You know what I mean? I didn't even know about that until people started yeah. saying that on YouTube and, and shit like that, but. Yeah. You know, so I didn't even think that I was just like, just blown away. I just, you know, it's like, wow, this is just amazing. Um, Ingve you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I was totally blown away. Um, today it's still, I mean, he's, he's had a major influence on my playing. But, my um, dad used to be a bouncer at a local place here and Ingve came through and played. And uh, like my dad, being a guitar player obviously was there but as a bouncer wise he was like he's like i couldn't even pay attention to the bouncing people out of the bar because he was so enthralled by ingve's playing and what right. was going on and how amazing he was and then ingve like flicked a pick out and my dad caught it and like he still has that pick even now it's still sitting in his toolbox because he won't let me touch it no. i know right i caught one at, when he came it was actually at the exact same place that my dad used to bounce 20 years ago he came back and uh Ingve was like flicking picks out to people and I was getting so pissed because like they kept coming to me, but like, I'm kind of short, you know, so I couldn't really reach out and grab it. And then finally he like, he like he kept seeing that I wanted one. So he came over and he kind of flicked one and I caught it like that. And I was like, Oh my God. And then I just like held it and I didn't know what, what to do with my life. The pick of destiny. Yeah. So, so, so did you the pick did, of destiny? Was it a big thing for, for people to say that, Oh, well, Malmsteen, he doesn't have any feeling when he plays. Did you hear a bunch of that stuff? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I, I remember mean, I, when Malmsteen... I, 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 I didn't really... You know, I never really cared about other people's opinions on yeah. music. You know, because I I remember having early on, you know, you know, and this goes for a lot of people, of course, but I I, fe I felt so strongly for music and, mm -hmm. and the way, you know, music, musical performance, melody, harmony all of it, how, how it affected me, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, so yeah. I, I couldn't care less what, what anyone else, you know, right. thought. Yeah, of course. I just, I remember personally hearing other guitar players saying that, oh, well, he just plays fast and he has no feeling. And I just would always remember thinking to myself, what are you talking about? You know, I mean, you know, well, that's pretty subjective though, too. You know, I mean, I mean, I, I've heard so many slow players play without feeling, you know, exactly. It's not exclusive for for fast right, playing, right? And and I I, I want to say that, I mean the the idea that that fast can can't be beautiful, is is absurd to me. Yeah, yeah, I I couldn't well, agree more. Because I I've always thought it's like you know that's very subjective of you to say that you know, cause like you, like you said, you feel music at a certain level. And if somebody's playing fast, like Ingve, or, you know, you listen to somebody like Rusty or even yourself. And it's like, just cause it's fast. Doesn't mean that I don't have emotion for what, what it is that they play. Right. right. And then it's like, somebody's trying to tell you that you shouldn't feel a certain way. 
based on yeah. because this guy's playing fast. It's like, well, why what, what, what care what you think? You know, I mean, like, I like it all. And I like slow yeah. stuff. I mean, but it's like to, yeah, like you said, to be exclusive to just, oh, if it's fast, it's there's no soul or there's no feel. It's like, I don't even know what that means. Like, yeah. I don't even let my, I don't yeah. even let my students say that here. Like, there's no such thing as just feel or no feel. You're playing it and you like it or you don't. You know right. What I mean? Yeah, I think that whole feeling thing. It's like at first, as soon as I hear somebody talk about that, it's just like I know what they mean. It's like, oh, this because this guy's playing fast, he doesn't have a feeling. It's it's, it's really ridiculous. That's a, but that's a whole other subject. I could I could go on a soapbox talking about that bullshit. But uh, but well, I, you're I, kind I, of I, susceptible to that too. Being as fast as you are, you know, the number one thing people talk about for you is well, he's playing so fast. You don't even, does he even like the guitar because, you know, he's playing so fast. He's like, and it's like, how can you say that this person doesn't have feeling for guitar when their whole life is based around it? Yeah. Literally everything I've done with guitar, everything you've done and, and pair, it's like to say that you don't have feeling for it. It's like, dude, my whole life is based around this thing, but you know, true, true, very true, man. So, so so what else, who else, who else was a big influence? We know Ingve and, and Holdsworth and, yeah, Ingway was the like the, the really big one, my first really big one, uh, and then my next really big one, I guess, was Steve I. Mm. Yeah, uh, me too. And uh, it's also a, a guy who's you know got a lot of you know shit for not playing with feeling or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I I really like like his playing, and Steve. and back then I, I was crazy about Steve's playing. Yeah, mm-hmm. and. Not only his playing, but you know his entire, like uh, his compositions and his arrangements and mm-hmm. and all of it is. Even his persona. I mean, just who he yeah. is. It's so weird, but in a good way, you know. And and I mean, he's he's such a like. Complete, you know, package with with everything he does. Right. Uh, sure. And uh, there's something about there's something about in a way where. He's such, you know, he's such a raw, you know, raw force mm-hmm. on the guitar. Right. It's just, yeah, and he's like a, an amazing improviser. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, he's written a lot of great songs, but it's, it's not, you know, he's, he's not the one I'm thinking about as a, you know, a really great uh, composer, even though I love a lo- lot of his music. Right. Uh, and, and I mean, he... he he, for me, I, I think Ingui is, I, I perceive him as being very much a feeling player. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's like his hands are, you know, it's bleeding emotion mm-hmm. a lot of the time when he right. plays. Uh, and Steve I has that too, but he's more, he feels more, you know, his solos feels more like they are composed. Right. Uh, he, he doesn't right. have... Yeah, he, he feels more like an intellectual player. Right. I, I could agree with that for sure. In, in a way. And and uh, and I really dig that. I, I love that. I've mm-hmm. watched some videos of him where he like his form of relaxation is like he's sitting there writing out, like handwriting all of the notes on staff paper. Like that he just sits there and writes out his solos and writes out ideas. And he's like, oh, I'm just relaxing. Like that's his form of just reading a book or something. And I'm like, okay, that's awesome. I can't do yeah. that. Right. But you're probably right when you say that he's like super intellectual. It's like he, he it's yeah. like he overthinks every single note and in a good way. Cause he'll talk about his vibrato, right? Where he doesn't he's got like three different vibratos. He's got like the straight up and down, you know, where you're just doing wide old school vibrato. And then he's got like that one where he stays inside the fret and wiggles that's, it back and forth. That's a little classical bit. vibrato. Yeah. And it's like and he's like, on oh, this one I chose to have that note because of this, and then this one I chose to have this vibrato. And I'm just like, that's that's what got me into start like analyzing my playing, I guess, you know, I used to just, you know, balls to the wall, just play and hit the right notes at the right time. But then I'm like, Oh, I guess he's right. Like if I sit here for just an extra second and vibrato this note a little differently, it does give me a different, you know, something different that I wasn't expecting. And then there's like, I guess Alan Holdsworth would then be my, my third uh, big influence. And, and, and the one that has, you know, stayed with me as, the main one ever since and he also you know gets you know a lot of crap for not playing with feeling or whatever because 
a lot of the stuff he he plays it's so like c- cerebral mm-hmm. it's but i feel like a lot of it, people say that you're not playing with feeling because you've stepped away from the pentatonic box you know you're not doing the blues licks like everybody the flat fives and yeah and if you're not doing that then you don't have feel and it's like well lydian has quite the uh, emotional state in my head you know yeah, what i mean yeah and Absolutely. and I agree for for sure that's that's a part of it that people expected to be expect expected to be to be blues yeah, like you know, to have Moore a certain or something. kind of yeah to have a certain kind of vibrato and have you know a certain amount of bends mm-hmm. and right. then you have key, some, someone key thing right there bends if you're not bending a bunch of notes then you don't have feeling that's yeah, what I meant and then you have someone said, like yeah. Alan who who doesn't. It doesn't have a lot of blues in his playing. He, mm-hmm. I mean, this is just not a blues guy. Right. And, he's, and, he's, and I, I, I like that. the way he bends in vibratos, though. It's, it's, it's his own unique way. He does a lot of the stuff with the whammy bar and, and whatnot. This yeah. is just completely innovating to me. And wh- when I hear him play, I mean, his, his best work, for me, it's, it's, it sounds like his guitar is crying. Mm-hmm. I mean, for me, it's like super emotional to listen right. to. There's a lot of his music that I, I almost, you know, I need to be alone when I listen to it because it's like, it tears me up. Right. Because yeah. uh, I find it so beautiful. And, and other yeah. people think it sounds like garbage, but. Yeah, I hear you. That's, they, it's, it's hard for some people to understand. I, I used to teach this guy that every week he would come in and as part of the lesson, he would ask me, do you think this guy knows the modes? <laughs> and, uh, he, you know, he, he'd ask me certain guys in the, he came in, he goes, this Alan Holsworth guy, he doesn't ever play in key, does he? It's like, man, some people just don't get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I think you, I think it takes a certain, you have to, I mean, I don't, I don't know. It's not like you have to be a musician to appreciate it because that certainly is not the truth, but at a certain level you have to have a, uh, you know, you can't go listen to Holdsworth cold. You know what I mean? If you've never experienced anything like that, 